I can't stop looking at my phone, but I'm not alone. Over 2.5 billion people have smartphones now and lot of them are having a hard time to putting them down. The problem is, our devices are designed to keep us engaged. They are intentionally addicting. But if you understand the tricks that grab your attention, you can learn to have a healthier relationship with your phone. When you get a call, a text or a message, it's usually because another person wants to communicate with you. But a lot of today's apps stimulate the feeling of that kind of social interaction to get you to spend more time on their platform. If Facebook sends you a push notification that a friend is interested in an event near you, they are essentially acting like a puppet master, leveraging your desire for social connections so that you use the app more. But notifications did not always work like this. When push notifications were first introduced for email on Blackberries in 2003, they were actually seen as a way for you to check your phone less. You could easily see emails as they came in, so you didn't have to repeatedly open your phone to refresh an inbox. But today, you can get notifications from any apps on your phone. So every time you check it, you get this grab bag of notifications that can make you feel a broad variety of emotions. The predictability could take out the addictiveness and it's effective. Slot machines make more money in US than baseball, movies and theme parks combined and they become addictive about 3 to 4 times faster than other kind of gamblings. Some apps even replicate the process of pulling a slot machine lever with the pull to refresh feature. That's a conscious design choice. Those apps are usually capable of continuously updating content, but the pull action provides an addicting illusion of control over that process. In future, we might see healthier way of delivering notifications. Research shows that bundling notifications where phones deliver a batch of updates at set times reduce user stress. Then you have to grayscale your screen. The easiest way to attract your eye's attention on a screen is through color. Human eyes are sensitive to warm colors. In eye tracking tests like this one, they gravitate particularly to bright red. That's why so many apps have redesigned their icons to be brighter, bolder and warmer over the years. It's also why notification bubbles are red. A little icon like this or this doesn't have the same impact on your attention as this. But you can utilize the distracting effect by selecting a grayscale color filter in your phone's accessibility setting. When you make everything black and white, your brain isn't tricked into thinking that this is any more important to you than this. Unlike pagination, where users have to click a load new content on another page, Infinite scrolling continuously loads a new material, so there is no built-in endpoint. Video autoplay works in a similar way. In a 2005 study, individuals who ate soup out of a self-refilling bowl ate 73% more than those who ate out of a normal bowl filled up by servers. But those who ate from the self-refilling bowl didn't feel any more satisfied. So, a visual cue like an endpoint is better at telling you the right time to stop than your own sense of satisfaction. And because so many apps don't have an endpoint, you have to build your home screen around the eventuality of distraction. We check our phones a lot. Most of us drastically underestimate how often we do so. But technology might not always look this way. There are ideas for alternative interfaces that gives you functional choices and are more transparent about how much time you will lose with one action versus another. But for now, it's a question that everybody needs to start asking. Thanks for watching.